Oh, we've got audio. <laughs> so apologies for that. I just caught up to the point where, uh, actually, first off, tell me, do you now have audio? Can you now hear me? I'm pretty sure you will be able to. Um, but uh, give me, a, I'll just wait for, there's a 30 second delay. And so someone, there you go, that's better. Great. We've got audio. Fantastic. Annoyingly, so I've plugged everything in, but there's a button you've got to press to turn my microphone on, even though the actual box is already on. Anyway, uh, basically, I was just saying hello to everyone. <laughs> so you haven't missed anything. Um, but uh, and yeah, there we go. So and hear you loud and clear. We're all back. Uh, good. We're in the house and we're going to talk about uh, the reefing report. So firstly, then, what is this all about? And we might have uh, we might have connectivity issues as well. I've got a little warning in the corner that says uh, it's a low signal time. But we will power through, and I'm hoping that you guys will be all right. Uh, everyone, anyway, so we're back on. We've got uh, we've got audio, yeah, and we've got uh, video quality <laughs> saying it's poor. It will catch up, um, and uh, in a minute it'll go away, and we'll all be back anyway. So, anyway, plenty of people in tonight. Hello and welcome. Thank you for coming along. Uh, let's get stuck in then and talk about the reefing report. So, first things first, then, what is the reefing report? Well, for those of you who don't know, it was a YouTube channel that was set up by Mark Callahan uh, from Mr. Saltwater Tank and now of, uh, what's the channel, saltwateraquarium.com and Terence Fugazi, formerly of Neptune fame, uh, now of, uh, well, he's basically working, a man of leisure, let's put it that way, I believe. So those two set up a, a live stream only channel um, and... They talked about, they always actually, they always had a website. They had a website called The Reefing Report, which I looked at, still up and running. Uh, and it was basically news from uh, from the hobby. So they would bring you up to date with all the stuff that was going on in the same kind of way as Reef Builders does. Um, but uh, with the difference with this was that they would do a live stream every Sunday night. Uh, I don't know what time. I was always in bed, so it was some point uh, <laughs> Sunday night, but late, very, uh, very late on a Sunday night. And in fact, you know what? I'm just going to. Um, we're still getting poor video messages. I'm just going to check in with the missus and see if she's burning through all the data. With are, are you on Netflix? Yes. Could you turn it off? I'm having a trouble. <laughs> Thanks, babe. <laughs> this is the professional standard of the show uh, here. So anyway, right. So Reefing Report is a website, but also with Mark Callan and Terence, formerly of Neptune, they also did a live stream on Sunday night, um, late UK time. Uh, don't know what time it was, America time. Um, uh, and they talked about the, they just go through the, the, the Reefing Report, the, the stories that they pulled out down the week, and they would give a, an independent critique. So they'd give... They were both, they've both been in the, in the industry, not just in the hobby, in the industry, actually working in the industry for a, a great number of years. Uh, I don't know, uh, 20 years, maybe a long time, certainly um, in hobby and working for, for various companies and working around, uh, not various companies, but working with various people around the industry. So they, they had a really useful insight that you and I don't get to see. And because of that, they used to, it was a one hour long show and they talk about these stories and rather than just saying, hey, look, there's a rally on Gen 6 light coming out. Well, there's one blue, there's one pro, which is best. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. They give you a bit of useful information and their take on it. Um, and there were some points that they were just, I found them just really interesting and gave just great insights. So that was very different from, uh, from, a lot of other YouTube channels. And I thought they treaded the, the line very carefully uh, between sort of revealing trade secrets and uh, and yet being honest and open. So, and I'm just kind of pausing just for one second. I have a sip of my drink uh, whilst everybody mocks uh, Mrs. Reef Dog <laughs> in the chat. Uh, Netflix need the revenue, yeah, indeed. Uh, I think she said sod it and put Netflix back on. That's why I'm pausing because I can see the, uh, the the thing coming back up. Anyway, we're back on now. I think we should be clear. So that's the background. That's what the reefing report is. It was a really good uh, live stream, and I liked the insight that you and I don't really think about and things that we don't um, necessarily see as hobbyists. 
And one great example is uh, what Daryl Anson said. So he says uh, the show got backlash from BRS. He thinks the show got backlash from BRS due to Terence bringing to light the sale of Radions. Uh, and then a few weeks and the DOS, uh, and a few weeks later, uh, the Radion Gen Six was being released. So actually, on that front, then what happened was the uh, on the show. I don't know a few weeks ago, probably three weeks ago, I think, on the reefing report, they did uh, they they talked about Radions being on sale, and they were discounted by something like fifteen percent, I think. So a fair old chunk of change uh, off. Um, and I didn't think anything of that. Uh, but what they pointed out was, look, actually, when companies do this, it generally it often means that a new product is coming. And lo and behold, two weeks later, uh, the, the new Radeon Gen 6 came out. So Daryl is speculating that that's uh, uh, what had something that had something to do with it. But let's have a bit more content context first and see what uh, and see what's actually happened here. So this is speculating as to, to why this might have um, uh, been cancelled. But what actually happened was. The reefing report is now dead. It's no longer, well, they said it was on a hiatus. It was paused for a period of time. It might come back. But reading between the lines, I can't see it coming back. It looks like it's dead. Certainly the live stream. Uh, and what happened was last weekend was the last uh, show, the last reefing report. And they uh, did a, a just kind of, kind of a somber show. They just hit 1,000 subscribers, which is no mean feat. And they got there in a relatively short space of time, which was good going. And they did a relatively somber show where they talked a little bit about um, getting to a thousand subscribers and that they were pleased with that and proud of that. And then they came on to the bad news that the show was going to end. And that's what I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do now is tell you, I'm going to play a quick clip from this, um, the, the reefing report. This was last week's reefing report. And this is Terence explaining in his own words, so I'm not misquoting him, exactly why uh, the they've had to stop the show. It's about a 90 second clip. So I'll just go quiet for a sec while you listen to this. Walking that tightrope tight for me in my own personal situation uh, has been incredibly difficult. Incredibly difficult. And, uh, and, uh, and I've in done it, in my opinion, very successfully uh, thus far. Uh, thus far. But in order but to do in that, order to do that, that and to continue to do that, I see a rocky road, see a rocky road potentially uh, in, being able, uh, in being, being able to give you guys this complete, honest, and, honest and unadulterated uh, opinion, uh, editorial opinion editorial from myself, from myself uh, on, uh, on these, these news, uh, these pieces uh, of news that come out. Um, so, you, know, you know, with specifics to, to certain, certain brands in, in, in my personal, personal situation. situation. Because, because of that, that I had to talk to Mark, Mark and say, Mark, Mark I, am I am going to have to take a step back from the reefing report. This is a joint thing. Um, it's not uh, it's not one person's thing. It's always been Mark and I together uh, on this. And I told Mark, I'm going to have to take a step back for now. If you desire to carry this thing on with another person, you know, in the other seat uh, or on your own or whatever it may be, uh, please do so. It's, you know, I want you to do that. Uh, but I have to take a step back at this particular point. Or right. <laughs> now, a lot of people said um, the, uh, the, the I hadn't muted, so you get a bit of an echo. So um, I hope you caught most of that. But basically, the long and the short of it was, I made kind of a, a summarized note of what he was saying. Um, and let's repeat it anyway for the sake of it. So he said he had personal situations that he can't discuss. I think that he was saying before that was as a result of him, uh, the work he's done in the hobby uh, previously to this, i.e. working for Neptune. I think he was their marketing manager. You caught it. Cheers, Jim. Um, and he had to walk a tightrope, uh, found it very difficult, saw a rocky road with that going forward. Okay, so that's what happened. He. Uh, he said that he was finding it very difficult to tread the tightrope, and that he, you know, he had basically had a conflict of interest. Was was what he was saying. And now I'm going to have to speculate a little bit here because that's all he said. He was very cautious about it. And actually, throughout the show, it, he's obviously got um, uh, issues with. Uh, I don't say issues. He's got a history with Neptune, working with Neptune. So there are various things that I'm sure he still knows, despite having been out of the company for a little while. That he needs to be careful about. Um, talking about on on air and actually I always thought he did that really well I never got the the feeling from him that he was really revealing trade secrets he was always very guarded on it and he'd, he'd give his usual spiel saying 
hey, I don't know, um, and uh, I'm out of the business and all this sort of stuff, and I can't tell you anyway. So there was some kind of non-disclosure agreement, I suspect, whereby he left the company after, God knows, 10 years of, as their marketing manager, and basically, I suspect, uh, there was an agreement that he wouldn't disclose any confidential information, right? which is completely fair enough uh, and standard industry practice. Uh, so that's what happened. Um, and there's a bit of speculation, though. This is, and as I say, so I'm, I'm speculating a little bit here. I don't really know. He was really guarded uh, when he was giving the message. And all he really said was, I've got personal situations. I can't talk about it, but it means I've got to step away, um, which I thought was a really unsatisfactory um, answer not from not unsatisfactory as in Terence, you didn't tell us enough, but as in we want to know more. You can't just uh, walk away like that. Not his fault because it sounds like he's bound, but it left it just left me with a thousand questions. And when we've got uh, when we've got something like this, uh, a good independent channel that analyzes critically analyzes products rather than just saying, "Hey, it's fantastic, go and buy it." Uh, I think that we need to know more. And actually, um, I suspect, and I'm again speculating a little bit here, but I'm suspect I suspect this might have had something to do with aperture. So the point that um, the, the guy mentioned earlier, Daryl, which is still on screen, is that um, he teased the release of uh, Radions and or foreshadowed it basically. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's uh, if Radion or Ecotech were bothered by that. He's probably not the only person to think. There's a sale of this product. That means something new is coming. Um, so I don't know if they were bothered by that. And to be fair, it was it, although it was a good show, it was in its infancy, and it's not like it was getting hundreds of thousands of views a week. So I don't know if that was necessarily that big an issue for them. But Apo uh, sorry, Neptune are now part of the same company. So they, they, there's this umbrella company called Aperture, Aperture Pet Supplies or something like this. And they own, this is my understanding, they own uh, Neptune, Bulk Reef Supply, Ecotech, um, Aqua Illumination, and I've got a feeding one more. But basically, they, they own Ecotech, uh, Bulk Reef Supply, and Neptune. So maybe uh, with Terence talking about uh, products independently of, of uh, Ecotech, maybe being critical, maybe giving a bit more information than they thought he should, like foreshadowing the, uh, the release of the, uh, the Radeon Gen 6. Maybe they didn't like that. I don't know. I personally felt, like I've said, he treaded that line really well, and I didn't ever feel like I was getting inside information from him. Without knowing the, the inside information uh, from the actual company he came from, who knows? He might have been telling us uh, telling us things that he shouldn't, but I didn't get the impression he was. And I suspect that it's got something to do with Aperture because they're all together and because um, of the history with, with Terrence. So I think it probably had something to do with them, but to be fair, I am speculating. Um, and there's one point that Jim uh, Graham makes, uh, which is a very good point. I've been in a similar situation professionally. In terms of my separation and payout still keeps me quiet. And this is it. And I'm not I'm not criticizing Terence for this. And if you look at the, um, if you watch that video last weekend, I think it came out a couple of days later. If you watch that video, Terence and Mark looked really disappointed, genuinely disheartened. And they just, they look crestfallen to me. So I'm not blaming them at all. And I don't, I, as I say, I don't think that I didn't see anything that uh, Terence did wrong as such. And I don't blame them for stepping away. It, ultimately, Terence said, Mark, you can carry on doing it. Um, but he didn't want to because the, the whole point of it was they worked well together. They obviously have, their, I presume they're mates. They get on well. They were quite funny together and they played off each other well as well. They were kind of Terence's, I don't know if I could describe him as the bad guy, but there was that kind of the good cop, bad cop relationship, and it worked really well. So that's probably why they didn't want to carry on. And I don't blame Terence because at the end of the day, if someone says to you, do you know what, we've got a deal where you keep quiet and you keep the money. If you start talking, I'll take your money away. What are you going to do? You're going to take the money. The reason I'm, I think this is worth talking about on a live stream, though, is because I just found it really disappointing that an independent channel that gives you a really interesting insight that you just won't be able to think about yourself and gives critical anal uh, uh, critical analysis of products was really useful. And uh, we, we have a very small media presence in the hobby. In the UK, there's one magazine of note. I don't know if there are others. I don't think there are. It's called Ultramarine. It's a decent read. It comes out once a quarter. Uh, then there's uh, Reef Builders, of course, which is a regular news channel. 
And then there's YouTubers. That's about it. We don't really have much beyond that. So to lose a really good independent feeling channel, that that's very disappointing for me. Now, my first one, I was playing with the idea of um, the title for this video. Uh, I changed it a few times before I published it because I wanted to make sure I was uh, being clear on what I've got an issue with here. Because it basically what I'm saying is it looks to me like an aquarium company has cancelled this show. That's the bit that I'm annoyed about and disappointed in, really. I also th I thought about uh, the first uh, thought that came to my head was call it our aquarium companies cancelling YouTube channels. But that's too broad because it's more than one channel because uh, it's only one channel. And it's, that implies, you know, the plural implies it's more. And actually, the reality is with me personally, and this is all, all I can tell you about is my experience with me personally. All I've ever uh, known is companies to be quite open. I've only dealt with I think, three, maybe four reefing companies, to be fair. But the ones I have spoken to are really good and they're fine with me being balanced. I've done reviews in the past where I've thought I've done I've been getting like refactory stuff. I've got a few pieces of refactory kit and I made reviews early on and I told them in advance, I'm not going to see you're not going to see the video before it goes live. And I'm going to talk about the pros as well as the cons. Is that OK? And they said yes. But a couple of times I made videos early on where I highlighted cons that I don't think um, other YouTubers would have done necessarily based on the reviews I've seen in the past. And every time I uploaded a video like that, I thought this is probably going to be the last time they speak to me. <laughs> They're going to be annoyed with me for uh, calling to attention um, problems or not problems, but reasons that you might not want to buy the product. But actually, what I've always found is that that they're actually really grateful for it. They say, great review, really enjoyed it. The, cri the criticism was fair. And I think as long as aquarium companies, in my experience anyway, and it's limited experience, but in my experience, as long as you're being fair in your criticism and you're not just slating a, a product for no good reason or to get views or whatever, they don't mind the criticism because nothing's perfect. And so, for example, the KH Keeper that I first bought was a bit noisy. I said in the video, I wouldn't want it uh, recording sorry, running tests every hour whilst I'm watching TV. And it's true. And um, they acknowledge it. It is a bit noisy. So I think as, as as long as you're being fair with aquarium companies, they don't mind criticism. I don't feel like they want to shut you down. So that's why I steered clear of that first title that I thought of, because actually, I think aquarium companies are okay with it. And there's, this is slightly different situation, because of course, Terence has been in the industry. He's even worked for this company for a long time. And I don't, I don't think he was developing products, but um, maybe he was. I think he was marketing, but correct me if I'm wrong and you know that. But he, there is a difference there between a normal normal YouTuber and Terence because he does have uh, connections to the hub, to the industry and he, he knows things that uh, that you and I don't know. But nonetheless, for, for this to be shut down was just, it just, that sucked to me. It's different from... Uh, it's not like so I'm suggesting aquarium companies are going to shut everyone down. I don't think they're really too bothered about a bit of uh, a bit of fair criticism, certainly from what I've seen. But it just sucked. Um, and we've lost now a channel that gave balanced and fair uh, criticisms of products and let you. And importantly, so one of the reasons I wanted to set up this channel, there were a few reasons, but one of them was there are a couple of times when I'd buy a product and then you open it and you find something out about it that you didn't know. And even that's in spite of watching a dozen video reviews on it, reading about it online, all this sort of stuff, and something surprises you. And that drove me crazy. So I always want to make videos where I tell people the downsides. I'm not trying to put you off buying it. I'm saying this is what you're going to get so you know what you're getting into when you buy it. And I think, in my opinion, the reefing report was really good at that, and they just weigh out the pros and cons. It doesn't mean that you're not going to go and buy the product. It just means you go in with your eyes open. So I'm really gutted that that's gone. And I think it's kind of poor form that they've been shut down by uh, an aquarium company. I didn't see anything grossly wrong. If Terence was every week saying, hey, do you know what? I worked on this at Neptune. And hey, do you want to know something about Ecotech that no one's telling you about and revealing you know, trade secrets or whatever, or even just confidential information, then fair enough. But he wasn't. So I don't know. It's just... It sucks. And that's why I wanted to talk about it. So let's see what you guys have got to say. Um, and I have missed a few comments, but uh, we're more or less uh, up to speed. And yeah, uh, and Robert Vacchiano, he was probably going to be sued if he continued. Yeah, for sure. You could, <laughs> And that's it. That's, I say for sure, who knows? But really, you can tell that that was reading between the lines. That's what happened. 
And if you're a former employer, you've got a non-disclosure agreement says to you, you need to shut up uh, or else, <laughs> then you stop it. At the end of the day, that show, they'd only just got to a thousand subscribers and even getting to a thousand subscribers doesn't necessarily mean you can monetize YouTube. You need 4,000 hours of view time, I think as well. But even if you get to that stage, they would have been making $50 a month at most, probably half that. So it's not like there was this massive um, source of income for them. And I got the impression that they wanted to build it into something, but it never felt like they were doing this because they wanted to, to make money out of it and have it be a big uh, money spinning venture. Maybe they did but uh, to a point, but uh, YouTube is not the place to go if you want to make your millions, unless you're Mr. Beast. <laughs> um, Mark says he finds it hard to believe that it's the Radions that caused it. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, I immediately thought a G6 must be on the way when I saw sales. Yeah, and a lot of people would have put that together. To be fair, I've thought that in the past about when I've seen uh, MP40s go on sale. And I thought, Do you know what? These are long overdue. Suddenly we've got 15% off. Maybe this is coming. So, yeah, it's not just him that would have thought that, to be fair. Um, <clears throat> but it's, uh, and the reason I posted that is it's kind of an example of the sort of things that they talked about that might have um, started to get people behind the scenes worried, particularly given now Neptune, Ecotech, uh, Aqua Illumination and BRS are all under one roof. And this is actually on that point. So that I've up until this point, there's been a bit of um, chat about Bulk Reef Supply merging and you know, Bertram Capital coming in and kind of trying to take over the world and make it all a closed shop. And I've been completely on board with that. And I thought, you know what, it's a good thing that there's investment coming in. I see no downside. Um, I like it. And this is the first thing that I've seen, assuming it is um, uh, one of those companies, Neptune or Aperture, assuming it's something to do with that, which it must be something to do with that. This is the first time I've thought, hmm, actually, I'm not sure about that. And with um, Bulk Reef Supply uh, now, because, of course, Randy's left the BRS uh, team, they're putting out much fewer videos. And they don't do the live streams anymore, which I used to enjoy as well. And you kind of, the live streams, because I've got, an hour or two hours to talk, I can talk a lot more openly and I can just riff and talk about things just a lot more openly. And that's the way the live streams were with BRS as well. And you don't see that anymore. And that's nothing to do necessarily with Aperture, I don't think. But um, but yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's the first thing that, yeah, in fact, here we go. First thing that I've seen that is negative to come from uh, from the whole Aperture taking over the world thing, taking over the world of reefing. Um, <clears throat> Aperture Science, the cake is a lie. I don't understand that. <laughs> uh, but tell me what you're saying. Peter T, I'm suspecting it was the reagents. He brought up an alternative product. Ah, yeah, do you know what? I forgot to talk about that. Um, no, I don't I don't think it was that actually, because that's so on that, he, he was, and the one thing, whilst I say he was he was always independent and balanced. One thing I did find with Terence, this is natural and given his connection with uh, with Neptune, I always found he was he found it very easy to be open and balanced and give positives and negatives about other companies. But I found him less open to giving the seeing the good and the bad about uh, Neptune. And I, he would often uh, just say everything. It was great with Neptune and not see the bad side, which is probably natural because it was a product and a, and a, a company he was proud of. And he was involved in it. But, but the reagents thing. So Jim Graham um, did a, a live stream on that recently. You can There's a company called ABC Reagents, abcreagents.com, I think, in the States, who now do um, cheap cut price uh, reagents for the Neptune Trident. And uh, on the reefing report, they talked about this because I think I think that was after Telegram had done the, uh, the live stream. Actually, I emailed, I messaged the guy, ABC Reagents, on Instagram and asked him if he wanted to do a live stream in the UK because he's talking about bringing the reagents over to Europe. And I completely forgot to get back to him. So Jonas, if you're watching, sorry, mate, <laughs> I forgot. Um, but actually with that, I might uh, wait until it's out in, uh, in in Europe before I do that. But I don't think it's that because all he said was, look, um, this was um, a, a video, a live stream that went on Telegram. Uh, and actually he was, again, he, uh, and this is why I'm talking about him being less balanced with Neptune stuff because actually he played the Neptune side more than the open side. If I was doing that live stream, if I was doing a live stream about ABC reagents, I'd just be like, you know what? It's great. It's cheaper, cheaper reagents. It's good. Because um, the Neptune reagents are quite expensive. If reagents are cheap, no one cares. But if they're expensive, you'll look for an alternative. 
So actually, I found him quite defensive of Neptune on that uh, live stream. So I don't think it would have been that, to be honest. Um, but it's that sort of thing. It's the exact exact sort of thing that they would have been nervous about. Or maybe it was a combination. Maybe they were sort of there were things like this, things like the Radeon, half a dozen things like that, that actually it's all out in the public domain. People are talking about it. But maybe they just didn't like that Terence was talking about it. I don't know. I, I've given that uh, effectively Mark Callahan is conflicted because he works for saltwateraquarium.com and yet he goes on the reefing report and gives critiques of product, tells you about the negatives and the positives. I don't think that he got told he had to stop. So, you know, if, if saltwateraquarium.com is okay with it, why do why did Neptune have such a problem with it? If it was Neptune or if it was Aperture, I don't know. Um, interesting that Randy and Ryan both said they would walk away from BRS if Bertram started do, doing too much. Now Randy has walked away and Terence walked from Neptune. <clears throat> uh, how long does Ryan uh, last one year or two? So there's been, I don't know why um, Randy left, but someone pointed out, maybe it was Telegram on his stream, that Randy, he didn't just leave, he left the hobby. So you can't find him anywhere now. Um, and he, he completely ducked out. Instagram page was gone, Facebook page was gone, disappeared. And someone was speculating that, you know what, uh, BRS was probably fun when it felt like a small family and you're working with your mates. And now it's becoming a bit bigger and a bit more serious. Maybe it's less fun. So maybe that is it. To be fair, he got a, a job at a, a, a gun channel, didn't he? On a gun that he was really passionate about because I think he'd worked in the army or he'd worked with that gun anyway before. Um, so I think that was a really good opportunity for him. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe it was less fun. <clears throat> and there's a lot there's a lot less content on BRS at the moment, presumably because Ryan's busy and uh, and Randy uh, was doing a lot of the work behind the scenes. But I really hope they pick up again um, <clears throat> because I I love their stuff as I say all the time. Uh, what else have we got? What was the UK reefer show you wanted to mention last week? Coral freaks. I'll come back onto that because I'm going to try to stay on topic, but I will come onto that. So we're all good. Uh, plus Terence being a, a Neptune, an ex-Neptune member, yeah. And Les is in the house. Thanks, Les. And apologies for calling you Lee. Um, and Telegram says, ready for a refactory in the US. I think they're coming at some point this year, but I don't know. There's actually, there's the um, uh, smart tester coming soon. Uh, it's, it's an interzoo at the moment. And it can only test one thing, but if you get a couple, you could test nitrate and phosphate. And depending on the price, that could be amazing. And you'd never have to test nitrate or phosphate again. Um, <clears throat> so there you go. And Christina Lexi uh, Reeves Tank says, love your honest reviews. That really matters to me. And that's why this has cheesed me off so much, because I felt that uh, the reefing report was, was similar. I think it's so important to give balanced reviews. It doesn't mean that you have to slate a product. And to be honest, if anyone gave me a product that I thought was awful, I wouldn't bother doing a review of it because I don't want it on my tank. I don't want to get involved in it. So you're not going to get reviews hammering products, but it's just so important to be balanced. And it's not going to necessarily put people off. If I say, hey, I've bought the latest Radeon Gen 6. It's fantastic. The spread's really good. The color's great, but the app's clunky and I don't like it. That doesn't mean that everybody's going to stop buying it. It just means that you're aware of the, the downside. So it, uh, these these kind of balance it's balance that matters to me not just honestly balance you've got to talk about the good and the bad and it's just that's what the reefing report did and it was just uh, i don't know it really it cheesed me off to see that he had no choice but to step away it, exactly or compromise content and that's a really good point so actually in the video that i played a clip of they did he did say that look he, his choice was either to to step away or to carry on but not do it in the same way they'd done. And the mission for that, the reefing report, was to, to set out to give this independent, balanced uh, insight into the hobby from people who've had years and years in the hobby and years and years in the industry as well. And he said, well, look, I could just go back to just talking neutrally about it, but he didn't want to do that. And I'm glad he didn't do that because that would have been, that would have sucked big time. And that was not the point of the uh, of the show. I wonder if you need to pass on a review over to the company before being able to publish. <clears throat> I've never done. Oh, actually, no, I've done that once. I'll explain in a second. Can't get to that stage. Uh, <clears throat> influencing reviewers, what I'm saying, this is the web. So I don't think I don't think most companies are bothered about that. Actually, that was my impression before I got into YouTube. 
but the companies I've dealt with, and it's not a lot, <laughs> but the companies I've dealt with are open to it. They they appreciate balance. They're not bothered by it. It's not like they think they're worried their company's going to shut down because some slaphead on YouTube <laughs> said something negative. Um, there's only one time I uh, let a company see uh, a product review, uh, yeah, product review before I published it. And not, I always say that you can't do that. Um, and they said that they just wanted to make sure I wasn't making any mistakes. And I had a really good open uh, relationship with these guys. And I really liked them. And, and I trusted that they weren't going to try to tell me, oh, no, we don't like you saying that, you know, something negative about it or whatever. <clears throat> but actually, I regret doing that now. And I've never done it before. And I will never do it again. But I regret it because it made me feel like, I don't know, it just it just made me feel a little bit uncomfortable. And it wasn't the company's fault. Um, but generally, as well, in my experience anyway, companies don't get to see re video reviews before they go live. And that's the way it should be. You shouldn't have any input on it. They should tell you what I want to know from a company before I do a review is tell me everything you uh, you know about the product. So there'll be times when I'll be testing something and I won't quite be able to work it out. So I'll ask a question about it. But I want all the marketing bump that they send out press releases if we were in a world where we had press releases, those sorts of things. So I can then digest it all and tell people what I think is the important things. And if a product says, if it's a new light, for example, and the marketing material says it's the uh, it's the brightest light, it's the strongest light, um, <clears throat> it's the quietest light, it's the smallest light, whatever, I can say, well, this is what they've said and this is what I found and this is my opinion. So I want them to do that, <clears throat> but I don't want um, them to, to know about the, the review in advance. And I would be surprised if most companies wanted to see the review before. I don't think they're actually that bothered. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, uh, can someone recap? Go back and watch the start and watch it at two times speed um, so you can see. Uh, it does suck, it does suck indeed. Is ReefDog cancelled? No, ReefDog is not cancelled, I'm going nowhere. Uh, I have no, um, <clears throat> uh, no uh, conflicts of interest or anything like that, so I'm staying put. It was just the reefing report. It was a small new startup live stream channel and it's gone. <clears throat> um, how could they go about shutting down an independent YouTuber anyway? So the, when I say, oh, I don't know if I did say it, but the, it's not like they shut the um, the YouTube channel down. Let's be clear on that. This was a choice that <clears throat> Terence and Mark made themselves. They decided Terence felt for whatever reason, whatever conversation went on in the background, he felt that he couldn't um, carry on doing this presumably because he'd had a flea in his ear from Neptune or Aperture or whoever, and he decided to uh, to stop the show. It's not like they, they said to him, you're not allowed to, to publish this show anymore. They just presumably told him you need to back off saying, I don't know, X, Y, and Z, whatever he was saying. So it's not like they actually cancelled him. It's just it was cancelled as an indirect result of <clears throat> uh, a non-disclosure agreement, I presume, that sort of thing, a conflict of interest, perhaps. Um, we've thought we'll be cancelled by Mrs. Watching Netflix. I don't, to be fair, I don't know if that makes a difference. We've got fast broadband and it should be able to cope with that. But I always tell her at the start of the live stream, don't watch Netflix. And then I come down and she's watching Netflix. I'm like, if you just watch that, just start this. She's like, no. But anyway, um, <clears throat> what's appealing the most about Reef Talk is that you feel like a mate that's telling you what works, what doesn't, etc. He isn't an expert, doesn't hide it, and tells you what he went through. I'm glad that it comes across. That's, that's exactly what I want to come across. I feel a bit sorry for Mark Callahan and all of this as well. I feel sorry for both of them, but yeah. And Mark looked gutted. He looked absolutely crestfallen by that. And just, I don't know, he just, he, he does loads on YouTube anyway. And, but just, he, he gave the, these independent and um, unbiased side, both sides of the coin, this sort of thing, opinions on Reefing Report, which he doesn't do so much on, the saltwateraquarium.com videos, perhaps because they're kind of paid content because it's it's saltwateraquarium.com channel, but maybe because it also it's not as easy. If I do a five minute or a six minute review, you just can't go into the depth. If I were to do a two hour live stream like this or an hour live stream like the Reefing Report, you can go into it much more easily. But yeah, he was gutted. David D, good evening, welcome along. <clears throat> if he signed a, a non disclosure, he signed a non disclosure exactly, which is ultimately. Um, uh, you know, fair enough. Uh, let's a different YouTube that had started, but is now cancelled. A different YouTube that had started, but is now cancelled. 
don't understand. Um, but anyway, I'm going to skip forward a little bit and see if I can catch up with the uh, the chat a little bit. Thankfully, there are independent reef channels like Reef Talk and Telegram. Telegram, indeed. Trusting anything that comes out of Terence and Mark's mouth, nah. I see I don't agree with that at all. I absolutely um, found, valued their opinions. I didn't always necessarily uh, agree with everything they said. I didn't share their opinions. That's not to say that I'm right and they're wrong, but um, I always found it interesting. Um, although Terence was always a little bit biased towards Neptune, I found. Uh, but Jim Graham, so I'm going to embarrass you now as well. That te so Telegram is it's a live stream only channel, of course, but he is completely independent. He does sometimes get given products for free, but he will tell you, which is great. Not everybody does. Um, and he will be really open and honest. And there's no compromising uh, Jim. You can uh, you can offer him whatever you want. He's going to say no, and he's just going to give his honest opinion. So. Another another important channel from that point of uh, point of view, and NDAs are usually <clears throat> only state you cannot publicly disparage or give non-public information. Uh, NDAs uh, might well be bespoke in this circumstance, so who knows? Um, <clears throat> let's scroll forward a little bit and catch up. Um, you're talking. Someone's talking about is can high phosphate kill corals? I think, yeah, it can do. Uh, it depends what corals you've got. If it's softies, I wouldn't be mega worried. My even my SPS were in 0 0.6 parts per million. I wouldn't necessarily be too worried, but yeah, it's not it's not good for them. And it can certainly brown them out and create more algae as reef to the sea forever says. Um let's carry on. What have we got? Catch up a little bit with the chat. Uh be a bit negative or positive is still uh airtime uh, they still give to competition yeah especially since it brought into light that people are making competitive products for a fraction of the price yeah and it, this is the thing it's it, there's no such no such thing as bad publicity so if, if you're honestly and fairly criticizing a product it's not a bad thing and it shouldn't companies shouldn't see that as a bad thing and i think for the most part they don't i really do think they don't but and maybe there was um maybe there was more to it i don't know <clears throat> Um, Saltwater Aquarium still makes videos. Yeah, indeed, but it's, it's different. And I still watch all those videos. I still value Mark's input. Uh, very experienced hobbyist <clears throat> and very interesting <clears throat> uh, points as well. Uh, and Travel Insight says, hey, sexy bald reefer. <laughs> uh, an NDA cannot limit someone from promoting a product uh, from a former competitor. They can only limit information pertaining to information he had access to previously and publicly blast the brand. Yeah, and I'd see this is the thing. I think I think that he was probably perceived by the company to be sailing close to the wind, maybe. <clears throat> and they just said, "Look, you need to be a little bit careful," because at the end of the day, these guys were—I don't know if they were mates. I would assume they were they were mates with Terence. So I presume this was just a conversation to say, "Look, you need to to wind this down," rather than a, a full on legal threat. But maybe it was. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> and uh, freshwater ichthyology says having worked in the industry freshwater has a uh, major interest over marine though i really don't trust many reviews particularly some brands and to be fair you shouldn't necessarily trust every review you see even mine uh you shouldn't necessarily watch it thinking right i'm going to listen to exactly what alex says and whatever he says i'm going to take as gospel because even if i like to think i'm being honest but even if you don't think i am you should just be you don't want to necessarily listen to my opinion. My opinion might be different to yours. There are some products that I will absolutely love that you won't love. <laughs> so you should, I try to, one of the other things I do with my reviews, and I say this all the time, is I try to show you everything about the product. And I'll of course tell you my opinion, but ultimately I like to think that even people who think I'm biased and think I've been paid or think I'm just doing it to, to curry favor with uh, companies, even those people can just ignore all the fluff, all the bluster that I'm coming out with just look at the product and see how long the cables are, see what ports there are, see what it does, all these sorts of things. So that's what I think is um, uh, is important for all reviews, uh, when you're watching reviews, sorry, no matter who it is. I was once offered a product with the terms of sharing the data so the company could decide what would be released to the public. I didn't accept the product. God, I want to know what that is, Jim. <laughs> um, yeah, interesting. So you, so you'd, you'd do your little study, whatever um, uh, investigation you found, then tell them before you went live. I don't like that at all, and I'm glad you said no. Um, I feel like that might have been a light that you talked about on your Instagram page. Um, 
you mentioned I won't I won't uh, out you <laughs> in case it's not or in case you don't want to talk about it. But anyway, yeah. So that I really don't like that, and I'm I. I it obviously it does happen then if it's happened to you then it happens and i think i was i was offered a once on instagram my instagram page is tiny at reef door go and add a few subscribers followers to it but i was offered um a product that was worth like 20 quid or something and in return they wanted uh i don't know like five or ten posts about it and i think they were asking did it, did it say positive posts maybe not it, but i think it did and they wanted an absolute ton and i thought if you give me i don't know a, like a bag of uh, sand or some activated carbon or whatever that's worth 20 quid and you want me to post 10 times about it i mean that's just going to look very unnatural and it's not going to do anyone any favors so i didn't like that and i mean for 20 quid i'm cost you a lot more than that to compromise my morals <laughs> and i think probably most people to be fair um oh you're talking about uh something off topic sorry i'm going to try to stick on topic as, as much as possible telegram just pointed out a perfect example uh, of a, a, a potential for weighted reviews even that with that though to be fair if they're saying we want to see your um your data before you publish it that doesn't necessarily mean i completely admire uh, jim for for saying no to that and it would make me think well why do you want to see that are you going to try to influence me but that doesn't necessarily mean they don't want um they get they want to tell you what to say, but it would be concerning, yeah. Um, BRS are controlling mind games by only promoting products which are for their own business interest. Countless times in their Facebook page, posts get shut when they are uh, going into criticism. I mean, that's the, that's true of many Facebook pages, to be fair. And I don't like um, uh, I don't like uh, Facebook groups as a general rule, uh, for partly for that reason, but. I still generally like BRS, even though I don't buy anything from them, but I still like them. And I think they've done, done an absolute ton for the hobby. Alex, how come nobody is knocking that reef to leave? 300 pounds, load of rubbish. I've seen one. I've only seen one reefer saying it's rubbish. I've only ever seen people saying it is rubbish. <laughs> so the only I can't remember who I've seen talking about it. Certainly saltwateraquarium.com. Mark Callahan did a video about it and explained, and they've talked about this on the reefing report, actually, that you've got to hold it to kill Aptasia. You've got to hold this in the tank with your finger on it. There's no um, there's no switch that you can just turn on. Do that for two minutes at a time, two days in a row, and then it still might come back. Um, so I've only seen anybody, the only people I've seen talk about it have been critical of it. I've not seen anyone saying good things about it, to be fair. Um, so I don't know. Tell me who you've seen talking about it positively. Uh, I've not seen it. Uh didn't want to make didn't want to be made for drinks <laughs> indeed yeah so drinking water instead of beer exactly yeah no more drinking games this week that's a bad idea um let's scroll forward a little bit did you see uh the reef builder review of the wand yes reef builders talked about it as well i think jake also noted uh, that the company is releasing an upgrade all prior prior, uh, prior owners get it free so they yeah there's an upgrade that's uh, i think it's more a more powerful death ray more powerful UVC. And the problem with the Reef Delete is that if it was powerful enough that you just tap it, zap it, and it's done, the Aptasia dies, it's probably dangerous <laughs> for the user or for other corals or whatever. So, you know, it's just it's one of those products that sounds amazing, but then when you look at it, it's like, mm. and that's what I'm talking about. That's the exact sort of thing. So if I did a review of that, I would have said, look, it can work for you um, if you don't mind putting your hand in your tank for two minutes at a time then going away and coming back the next day and doing it and a, a bit more of effort. It does work. But actually, these are the downsides. You've got to hold your finger down on it. You can't just zap it once. Those are the things that I find really useful. And that's what saltwateraquarium.com told you. So fair play. You know, they're telling you the uh, the good and the bad side. Uh, what else have we got going on? Do you plan on doing any traveling in the foreseeable future regarding reefing? No, probably not. I'd like to do some scuba diving, um, but uh, no, not really. I'd love to go to one of the shows in America. I'd love to go to Reefer Palooza. Um, but yeah, that's the trouble is if, if I went, I'd have to be just immersed in uh, hobby stuff and probably making YouTube videos for a few days and dragging my missus along on holiday where we just sit in a hotel room uh, and she has to watch me talking a load of to a load of fellow nerds about fish for her probably wouldn't be so much fun <laughs> so probably not 
Um, what else have we got going on? ATF in the house says the corporate corporatization of America. Same in healthcare. Not surprises getting worse in the aquarium hobby. You know the saying: He who holds the money holds the power. Uh, what else have we got going on? What does mates mean in this context? Are you saying Terence and Mark are married? No, <laughs> I mean what I'm saying is uh, I presume that Terence is still. Uh, friends or on speaking terms, friendly terms with people from Neptune, if it was Neptune who told him, you know, wind it in a little bit. And I presume there was a phone call. Like some people suggested this was a, you know, they got a cease and uh, Terence got a cease and desist letter. Given the relationship and he worked for them for so long, if I, there's companies I've worked for for that kind of length of time, and I would like to think that they'd pick up the phone to me and say, Alex, mate, you know, this um, YouTube channel you're doing, you're sounding a bit close to the wind. Can you wind it down? That's what I'm saying, that just that he's probably still got friends at uh, Neptune and people who are, are close enough and friendly enough to pick up the phone rather than threaten legal proceedings immediately. Kenneth Casey, if I bought uh, products based on the review of a YouTuber in the past and the review was not entirely honest from consumers' point of view, this is disgusting. Wow. Not holding back. Um, to be fair, with a lot of products, it, it, and this is why I always say, if you watch my reviews, don't necessarily just listen to what I say. I might have a different opinion to you. And that's the same for everyone. The, the Part of the reason, I, or one of the main reasons I watch um, YouTube reviews of any product, no matter whether it's in the, the aquarium hobby or not, is to see for myself and judge what I want, rather than necessarily listening to the, uh, the, the reviewer. There's always going to be some element no matter how independent you say you are, there's always going to be some element of, hey, you know what, I should probably highlight the positives here or something like that. So you, it's it's on you to to watch videos and think to yourself, hang on a second, what uh, what am I um, what am I? <laughs> yeah, so it was the uh, the light uh, that we're talking about. Uh, think to yourself, what am I actually? Um, what am I buying? And you've got you've got to make your own decision basically. Uh, but I, I take the point, and if 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 you're watching a review that's actually genuinely dishonest and misleading and not just, you know, because opinions can be can be a little bit different. And that you might find there are some lights that I find quite noisy and the next person might find them quiet. So if it's things like that and it's just a difference of opinion or a different perspective or someone's being perhaps more positive, you know, polishing a turd <laughs> essentially or being a little bit more positive than they should. I'm OK with that. I think that's totally fine. It's just the way uh, the way life goes. But if, if it's actual dishonesty, then no, that's uh, is not OK. Uh, hey, can you have Jim? Do you mind if I say what um, what I think it is in that case then? Uh, hey, can you have more than one rat in a tank? Oh, yeah, you can have loads of rats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're good as gold as a general rule. Some of them are a little bit aggressive. Um, the only really aggressive rat I had was a Melanurus rat. And he got big and started being a little bit of a buddy. But most of the time, they're almost completely... <laughs> peaceful how much would it cost to compromise your morals a lot of money a very lot of money it would be possible i absolutely would sell out for the right price uh but it, we're talking probably hundreds of thousands of pounds <laughs> and even then um i value this youtube channel uh to me personally it matters to me uh, if you gave me a million quid i'll say anything you want and then i can step away <laughs> But a lot. Funny question. It does feel like there are less, less reef hobby YouTube channels out these days. Yeah, and a few a few dropped off. So the biggest in the UK, the three biggest in the UK by subscribers are uh, Aaron's Aquarium, Prestige Reef, and Reef Talk. Uh, and Aaron's Aquarium dropped off, uh, I don't know, two years ago now, quite a while ago. And he, he's now out of the hobby. He started up a shop. It didn't work out. He, uh, he disappeared. Um, and so he doesn't post new videos anymore. Prestige Reef is a coral farm. So does post videos, but it's not his priority because he's got other things to do, but he does still post videos. Um, and then there was, uh, what else was a Dan's Reef shut down ages ago. Um, and uh, and he was, I don't know, about 10, 12,000 subscribers at the time, which was a decent size. There's certainly in the UK, there aren't that many. So there's a few kind of smaller channels coming through, like um, Bearded Reef is, uh, although today's he had a day off, <laughs> I was went looking for his video at six, um, but he's he's growing a little bit. But there's not that many around, certainly in the UK, and even worldwide in the States, there aren't that many channels, to be fair. I'd like there to be more. Uh, why uh, why should why would why should Mark Callahan be cancelled? So he he was offered the choice, offered. It was a joint venture, basically. And he said, you know what? I could have carried on, I could have either done this on my own or carried on with someone else, but he chose not to. 
And I think that was probably the right decision because they just work really well. Um, how do they decide when a YouTuber is big enough to review? I think it probably depends on the brand. I I always I often wonder why I don't get sent products, <laughs> and I'm not really bothered because I don't want to just be doing reviews all the time. And generally, reviews don't do as well as some of the other videos I try to make. Um, so I'm not really fussed, but I don't get sent product uh, products to review very often. And I sometimes see smaller channels that do. So it don't, I don't think it necessarily matters when how big the, uh, the, the channel is. I don't know what it is. I can't honestly tell you, to be honest. The time, when did I start getting stuff? I got sent a, um, a, a refugium light from, it was a Luxbird, <laughs> Luxbird Par 38, I think. It was amazing. Um, and it grew Cheeto like no one's business. And then it broke six months later. <laughs> but that was like a 15 quid light from a, a small company, presumably just like a, one of these generic Chinese companies. Um, and that was when I was pretty small, probably only a couple of thousand subscribers. That was the first piece of equipment I got sent for free. But I don't know. I mean, if, if you've got, if I think if you're, if you're doing regular content and you're getting to the thousand subscriber mark, you're likely to start attracting um, free products. I've been offered some stuff in the past as well that I'm just not interested in. And maybe that's it. Maybe other people will take it and just take everything and, and share as many as they can. And if you had a, if you did have a channel where you do 50% of your content is reviews, you're probably more likely to get products. So, but I don't, I don't really know, to be honest. Many of you on YouTube get themselves to a place where they can become shills, where they then become shills. I, th I think, mm, I don't know. I, I, th I don't think there's anyone in the, in the YouTube hobby in our niche at the moment who I look at and think you sell out, you're just doing that. Uh, to get a, a free product. I think most people um, just aren't really interested in that. And because this is the, the this hobby is quite a community and I feel like more there's more care towards each other. So we generally care about what other people think and we would rather help people, help our fellow uh, YouTubers, fellow reefers than, uh, than, than help a, a company. I think that's generally the way things go. If you, and if you see... Uh, people taking products and saying they're good, chances are it's probably a good piece of kit. Because <laughs> most of the equipment in the hobby is decent, to be fair. Um, I feel like BRS had good intentions, but their size uh, keeps me wary of their motives at times. Yeah, and I, I think I, I, I think that's a really fair statement, to be fair. Um, and I hope they still carry on in the way they've been in the past. And I'd like to, from a selfish point of view, I'd like to see more of their videos, <laughs> more of Ryan. Loved his live streams um, as well. They're just really useful. Um, so I'd love to see more of that. And I'd love to see them uh, keep coming back. Did you have to ask to be a reviewer when you first started? No, I've never asked for a product. I never would ask for a product. Would I ask for a product? No, actually, that's probably not quite true. Mm, I don't know. I've, I can see a situation where I might do. But no, I've, I've never asked. Did I ever ask for a product? No, I don't think I ever have done. Um, and I was never really that bothered. I, when I started out as well, one of the first videos I did was an algae reactor that I'd bought myself. Um, and it was new, so it was likely to get a bit of interest. But I liked that I had complete freedom. I didn't feel obligated to anyone. When I, so my channel is now at the size where I probably don't have to worry about what other uh, what manufacturers think. I just can get on and do my own thing. But when it's small, if I was given something for free, I would likely think, oh, I'm only little, you're a big manufacturer, I've got to be nice to you. So I loved the, the stuff I reviewed in the early days, Jekod pumps, algae reactor, those sorts of things. I had complete freedom and there was no one in my head uh, messing with my mind or whatever. So I don't know, do you have to ask to be a review when you first started? I think, I think most people would only ask for a product that they're interested in. And even then, I've spoken to other um people either instagram or youtube who've who've said that they don't want to ask for products they might want to get sent some things that are really good but they don't want to ask for them and i think most certainly most of the big channels maybe it's slightly different when you get into it but most of the big channels that aren't really that interested in getting all these these pieces of equipment i might be completely misunderstanding this to be fair um but that's my that's my understanding I'm just starting a reef tank and uh, your reviews have been invaluable in my opinion. Do you ever do reviews based on subscriber requests? Mm, sometimes. Have I made videos? I think I've made videos a few times based on subscriber requests. So yeah, and but I basically I make videos that I think are going to appeal to the, well, 
mostly you're going to appeal to the broadest audience possible. There are times when I'll do a review of a product I bought, bought, paid for myself a Tunzi 8850 LED light. And the reviews on YouTube when I bought it were rubbish, <laughs> frankly. So I wanted to make a really detailed review. It was a niche product, but I thought it was a really good product for some people, very niche. So I decided to make that review, even though it was never going to do very well. And it only got a few thousand views, um, which is uh, probably made me about $10 for uh, 10 hours work. <laughs> but yeah, I do sometimes do reviews um, if people ask for it. So tell me what you want to see. And if I've got it, I'll review it. If I haven't got it, I can't review it. Um, have you ever tried a BCB filtration method? BCB filtration. I don't know what BCB filtration is, so probably not. Uh, Mark Novak lives in Belgium and is not a customer of Bulk Reef Supply. I don't really watch product reviews, but they make a lot of non-product uh, videos, reasonably good uh, experimentation. I like that, yeah. I even like their product reviews. So I've said this a thousand times before, but Thomas's reviews, they are pretty much adverts because they're products that BRS sell, and he works with BRS. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. He will still show you um, uh, things that you need to know about the product. So he'll show you a skimmer and you'll get to see how it looks in a sump. You'll get to see him taking the, the neck off, all these sorts of things. So it's useful information. Telegram, uh, you're now your MVP of the channel. Alex recognizes your existence in real life. <laughs> uh, what else have we got going on? Let's catch up with a little bit. What are your favorite reefing YouTubers? So uh, I've done a I've done a couple of videos. Actually, I did a video of my top seven uh, favorite YouTubers a while ago. Uh, it's since changed. But my favorite YouTuber is Prestige Reef. Uh, is a really good channel. Um, doesn't make so many videos now, but I still find this stuff really interesting. Um, Telegram is a really good uh, live stream only channel. Uh, Coral Euphoria is the best channel on YouTube. Uploads rarely, but when he does, you want to know about it. He's one of the channels that. Uh, you probably turn your, your notifications on for not just subscribe. He's brilliant. Um, I just love his approach. He's just like, you know what? This is the way I do it. This is my tank. <laughs> if you like it, cool. If you don't like it, if you don't agree, whatever. And if you're sensible, you'll look at him and go, I'm going to do exactly what he says. He's brilliant. Um, and he's 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 quite creative as well. I like the the style he does. Everybody, all YouTubers have got their own style. Everybody's slightly different. And he's got a really interesting style of making videos and he's kind of he's quite talented in the in the in the content creation and kind of the, the cinematography if that's not too wanky <laughs> so he's probably my favorite other good channels i mean there are loads of course there's reef builders is good uh reef dudes is good oh, i mean there's, there's 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 dozens i watch a ton of youtube uh, i'm obsessed with it <laughs> so uh reef bum did i say reef bum reef bum's good i like some of their um uh, their live chats. What other channels? But there's loads that are good. But BRS is one of my favorites still. Are you going to do any more tank tours like you did the one at Reef Dreams? Um, aquatic addiction in Wokingham. Mm. So I live near Woking, which is actually surprisingly far away from Wokingham, as I went for an interview in Wokingham once. Um, I'm going to have a look at aquatic addiction because I've never heard of it. Um, I've said I've said before, so I will do. I would love to do more tank tours. I did one for a bass, I don't know, six months ago, which was a really cool tank, um, seventeen hundred liters, big old girl that was, uh, and I'd love to do more. But the trouble is, I'm dependent on people approaching me and saying, "Hey, Alex, do you want to do a video of my tank?" Um, and I'm also dependent on being in a reasonable distance because I'm not going to travel for five hundred miles to make a video um, of a tank and lug around all my equipment. Because when I've done the videos of tank reviews, I've got to take camera sliders, two or three tripods, two or three cameras, microphones, the work. So um, so possibly, I'd love to do more. Um, and I always look in fish shops. There's one in my local fish shop, Reef Keeper Moss End. It's like a softy uh, tank. And for I'm not really a massive fan of softy tanks, but this is wicked. And I think it would be really good for, for newbies to see what you can achieve with just soft corals. And it was just really simple for just a skimmer, basically, um, and water changes, a few cool fish, simple, and uh, all three. And it was really easy, and I'd love to do a video of that. I did talk about it, but then um, uh, all sorts of things happened, and we didn't ever get around to doing it. But I'd like to do more shops. But every time I visit a shop and look at their tank, most of them aren't that fantastic, to be honest, um, or, or, a, or a new so, yeah, but possibly. Um, what else have we got going on? Let's catch up a little bit. I'm always behind, aren't I, of course. 
Uh, 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 oh God, I've skipped an absolute ton of stuff here. Right, okay, let's go on. Uh, and this is one thing, Jay. This 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 software that I use is called uh, Streamyard. I hate it. <laughs> it's easy to use, but that's it. It's so limited, and it's bloody expensive. I need to get onto Streamlabs, but it's just very difficult to learn. I don't have the time, but um, I'll be. I'm sure I'll be able to keep up with um, uh, with uh, with the chat if I move across to Streamlabs. And of course, the best channel on YouTube uh, is the Opinionated Reefer. 200 subs. Um, actually, Bearded Reef uh, and uh, Jay's Real Reef UK are two good um, small channels as well. They do a live stream with Fish Palace, another YouTube channel, and Mogsy's Aquarium on a Friday that I'm sure many of you guys already know about. What's your take on keeping peppermint shrimp and a chorus ras? I presume you mean a red chorus ras. People often talk about a yellow chorus ras, but there is no such thing as a yellow chorus ras. Halicori's cryus is a yellow ras, and that's what some people sometimes refer to as a yellow chorus ras. So I presume you mean a, a red chorus ras. Um, I've never kept them. I think they can get a little bit big, and I think they can be shrimp eaters, but I'd be surprised if um, uh, if a ras got hold of, unless it was like a dragon ras or uh, uh, what's the one fish with teeth? Harlequin tuskfish. Um, unless it was something like that, I'd be surprised if they went for peppermint shrimp. So I, I'd be all right with giving that a crack knowing that potentially there's a risk. I did chuck in some anemone crabs and uh, into my tank a year or two ago, and they got eaten by uh, my yellow rust within seconds, which I was gutted at. <laughs> and it was my fault. Um, but I thought I might be able to get away with it because, well, various things. Anyway, uh, in the UK, there aren't many. No, there aren't many, which is a shame, even in freshwater. I see I've never really paid attention to freshwater, but yeah, it's all about America. And I'd like there to be more British channels, but... Um, I also like seeing the, the stuff across the pond, to be fair. We should boycott BRS and maybe they'll let the reefing report come back. There you go. Well, I'm, I tell you what, I'm not going to buy anything from bulk reef supply until the reefing report comes back. How about that? You've just lost zero dollars of revenue. Um, really excellent bearded reef. Ross is uh, all ill at the moment. Oh, no. So having a bit of R&R &R at the moment. Oh, well, I hope he's resting up. Didn't realise that. Ross, hope you're doing all right. Hope you recover soon. Uh You've bought binoculars to uh, observe your aquarium. I wear very luxe glasses, but I only have clear focus on long. Interesting. So I've used um, I use a, a, a macro lens sometimes, and you see things that you just don't see otherwise. That's really good. Um, but yeah, cool. <laughs> the more you watch uh, reefing videos, some channels start heavily pushing products with biased reviews, which are often overpriced. I do prefer a genuine RBS channel. There you go. But I, I think most people, most of us are... And one of the reasons, well, not really one, the reason I don't make bias reviews is because I don't want to. Um, but part of it is because I know that people will see through it. If I'm just, if I, so if you gave me a Radeon, uh, well, that's a bad example because it's a good bit of kit. But if you gave me a piece of kit that was a bit average and I just said, like a, the HANA calcium checker, if they sent it to me for free and said, we'll give you 100 quid to make a review. And I said, oh, wow, it's amazing. I love spending half an hour and uh, going through seven different reagents uh, only to get an inconsistent result. Uh, people would see through it, you know, obviously if I say it like that. But people see through BS, uh, I think. I think most people are, uh, are, are, are clever enough to realise when they're being, having the wool pulled over their eyes. Although some people read between the lines too much and um, think they're having the wool pulled over their eyes when it's not. But I don't think you can uh, kid people uh, for the most part. But there are some people who trust uh, reviews implicitly. There is a good few small YouTube channels in the UK I like the dad and son duo, Nathan and Corey Willard. Yeah. Um, son is called Corey. Very real footage and don't mind showing their failures. Yeah, indeed. And yeah, failures <laughs> happen. So I had a coral die. Let me show you. I had a coral die on um, this week. Uh, I'm going to show you just because it's good to show failures whilst we're talking about the subject. So here it is. And this was a, a, a coral I bought from a, um, a fellow hobbyist. Uh, and Let's just mute that. Uh, from a fellow hobbyist, I'd had it for years and it just bleached. I it hadn't been, I moved about six months ago. It hadn't been happy for a long time. And then I just, someone came around to buy a coral and I just suddenly looked at my tank. I was like, oh God, that's bleaching. And then it went to this and stripped the next day. I think it's because um, it didn't like, I moved it six months ago. I think it didn't like it. And it, I changed my lights recently. It might be that that tipped over the edge or. Uh, I don't know, something else that, that I think that it hadn't been happy for a long time. And I posted that on Instagram because I thought that was a really good example of when a coral dies and it's not dead yet, but it's going to. I need to try and frag it to save it, but I'm pretty sure that would work. But anyway, 
I think that's a really good example of when a coral dies and it's not because something you've that's just happened to the tank. It's probably uh, been uh, happening for six months. But yeah, it's important that people share their failures because um, otherwise people feel like they're a failure when they get into the hobby and they get um, diatoms and algae and they can't get rid of it and that sort of stuff. So it is important. But ultimately, actually on that point, so a lot of people who don't understand or don't who aren't involved in social media so much don't uh, consume it so much, not creators, I mean, uh, co uh, content consumers don't necessarily, uh, what was I trying to say? <laughs> uh, to, oh, yeah, don't understand it. Because really, what the, the reason, so most of the time, good things are what, uh, especially on Instagram, Instagram's a nightmare for this. Instagram, uh, if you just post a load of green hair algae tanks and fish looking a bit unhealthy, no one's going to watch it. So we, people create content, particularly on Instagram, but also other platforms. You create content that people want to see. So if you're just posting photos of a tank looking awful, no one's going to want to see it. So that's part of the reason um, people post positive stuff only. Obviously, other reasons as well, but it's part of the reason. Shall watch the stream tonight after work. Good man, welcome along. Um, Steve Webb, don't see the point of reviews and people like yourself if the company won't let you be honest. If they make a crap product, then surely they need to know so they can correct what's wrong with it. Indeed. And I think that, um, won't let you be honest. So I, I think companies do let you be honest. And I've never had anyone, because I've told a couple of companies, this is how I do things. You're not going to get to see the video. Uh, I'm going to say the good and the bad. Um, and that's the deal, basically. And I said, yeah, it's fine. Cool. And I think most companies probably aren't that bothered. Some might be a little bit guarded, but I think most companies aren't that bothered. Uh, I find it very hard to trust, to, to find true bias-free information about reef products, reef solutions. Every year, always, everyone always seems to have a monetary incentive to gravitate towards a certain solution. It, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I, it, but then I, 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 that's not my opinion, but I encourage that sceptical approach. And you're right to be cynical about these things because if, you're, if you think that way, you'll be able to make your own mind up and you'll be able to, uh, you won't get caught by um, the times when people do make uh, dishonest reviews. So, cool. I like that. Inappropriate Reef and Bahama Llama Corals. Two other good channels. Yeah, there are tons of good channels that I've not mentioned. And it's not because um, I don't watch them. It's just because I've forgotten. <laughs> uh, Tarnal Gardens as well. Yeah, their, their coral explainer videos are great. And I like Becca's tank series as well. She's really entertaining. She's just, she's just, uh, she's just got this, She's just fun, like she's instantly uh, open and just like it feels like she's being completely you, what you see is what you get kind of thing. For Parker's Reef is also a very good channel, and he, I think, he's very uh, honest with uh, with products as well. Uh, so yeah, he, he's uh, he's along the same lines, and uh, he won't uh, he won't be paid off uh, by uh, reefing companies. Reef Beef podcast. I never watched that. You know, I've watched it a couple of times, but I don't know what it is. I, I like them and I like the show. But I just don't find myself watching it. But it is good. Uh, Bahama got, Lama has gone quiet recently. Well, on that note, this was on his page, on his Instagram page recently. Whoop. The Lama will return July 2022. Um, so I don't know what happened to him. I don't know why he um, isn't making videos for PRS anymore. I thought it was just because he'd gone back to doing his own radio stuff. But I feel like that might not be the case. But anyway, uh, whenever whatever the situation was, I don't really care. I know sometimes I like it, and this video is a prime example. I like a bit of gossip in the reefing hobby, but I don't like drama. Might you might feel like it, it might feel like I do sometimes, but I don't like drama. I can't be asked with all of that. <laughs> so whatever the reasons here, I don't really care why he's not making videos with Beer anymore. I'm just looking forward to him getting back because I really liked his his uh, Bahama Lama uh, channel videos. What else have we got going on? Uh, this uh, this is the best road to unbiased reviews. Set up a Patreon. All money goes towards products to buy for YouTube. Products are then gifted back to Patreon subscribers via comms. That's a good idea. Um, I personally would never do that myself. And I think if someone does do that, credit to you. And a couple of people sometimes have posted critical comments on my product reviews telling me that I should be giving away the products that I get uh, for free. Uh, and I have, I sleep very well at night, uh, uh, very well at night, uh, taking free products. It takes a lot of work. When I do my live stream about how to set up and run a, a YouTube channel, I'll tell you about how much effort it is. <laughs> it's fun. I enjoy it. Don't get me wrong. But it takes a lot of work. And if I get given a product, particularly product reviews take me ages. And if I invest 15 hours of my time in it, 
uh, hard work in, uh, uh, when I finish the end of the, uh, my normal work, uh, working day as well, and I've got to go on and do that. I have no problem whatsoever keeping a kit, uh, keeping equipment. I think that's fair compensation. But I do like the idea of that. It's just I would never do it. And I think um, there probably aren't that many people who would who would do that. But that, that's the sort of thing that, um, that Telegram does, to be fair. Uh, did Plenum back in the 90s, and that was super successful. I don't know what Plenum is. Anyone experienced with treating dinoflagellates? Find the uh, Max Dinoflagellate Support Group on Facebook. It's really good. SJ Spicer, is he in Northampton? I've got a feeling he is. That's a little bit of a trek. Um, but yeah, it's cool. Yeah, he's got a nice tank, to be fair. It's been running for a long time. Tidal Gardens is pretty good uh, for learning about coral needs. Very good. And one of the things I like about the Tidal Gardens uh, coral care guides is that they don't just say, churn out the generic stuff like, this is a beginner coral, it needs medium flow, it needs high light. Uh, they talk, they, they, you, you'll never hear them say it's a, a beginner coral, it's a medium coral, it's an advanced coral. They just tell you about their, or plan, tells you about the coral needs in a way that you can then decipher whether or not it's suited for, uh, for your purposes uh, and your level of experience in your tank and so on. So I really like that. And um, yeah, they're really good. And he's obviously, I mean, he sees all sorts of um, corals all the time. So he's got a lot of knowledge there. Aquarium Adventures. Oh, freshwater. No, we don't like freshwater. <laughs> I'm one of those snobby saltwater obviously who doesn't like freshwater. Uh, is it possible for my bubble tip anemones using allopathy against my mushrooms? Uh, don't know. Never kept a, a bubble tip anemone, I'm afraid. Uh, they can uh, walk across corals and sting them, though. So. Practical Reefer is a great channel as well, apart from he's Scottish. And you're now off the uh, the Christmas card list then. Oh, no. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the Hannah Calcium Checker. I'm, I'm exaggerating with that. Yeah, I, I, I did have a Hannah Calcium Checker, and I didn't like it. I think there are two steps, two reagents, and it takes ages. The result, I think, was fine, but it just it was faff. And I've said before, the alkalinity, the phosphate, low ultra-low range phosphate and high range nitrates, are fantastic from Hannah. The rest, I wouldn't bother with personally. Um, would you do any fish medication content on how to treat ichor velvet? No. Uh, most American, uh, most content is American and not available in the UK. There, I, I wouldn't because I'm just not an expert in that in the slightest. So you wouldn't want to know. There's a channel called Humble Fish and Reef, which uh, you know, is run by uh, Humble Fish, <laughs> and uh, who's I think he's on. Um, uh, reef to reef or was anyway and he's also occasionally on ultimate reef um and they do videos about um fish disease they're they're you've got to want to watch them though they're not very engaging and that is massively important for youtube channels to be in, entertaining not just informative and i've sometimes thought about contacting them and saying look do you mind if i take the information in your video tell people that i'm making my version of it and it's based on this video but make it in a way that's a bit more palatable. Um, but uh, I don't know. I, I just don't like the fact that I, I don't know anything about it, really. I, I've never, well, I have medicated fish, but I, I don't have any any significant experience. So no. Uh, I keep thinking about starting a reefing YouTube channel, but might wait until I get my new tank and time to time to follow and set up my progress. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah, not a bad idea. If it's just a standard generic tank that... Um, that uh, everybody's got it's not so good if you could get a red sea reefer gen 2 people would be interested in that um but we'll talk about that more when we do when we do the old um uh thing imaging the old uh, live stream on that can you run an lps tank without dosing uh probably not really no you know <laughs> in fact uh you'd need to you'd need to dose but it's dosing isn't something to stress about um it's easy especially if you had if you used all three if you need one dosing pump one bottle test a bit and that's it so what happened? Oh, you've got to go back to the start, I'm afraid. Um, but yeah, if you stand behind uh, your products, you should be able to take the criticism. Exactly. And that, do you know, what I love the times when I've made reviews and I thought, mm, I'm never going to hear from these guys again. Uh, and they, they, they just, they take the feedback so well. And I love that. And you should be able to, because if, if your product's so bad, that um, a YouTuber saying one negative, one fair criticism about it folds it, then it was never going to survive anyway. But um, yeah, and I think that's uh, that's the way that most I think that's the way most aquarium companies see it. But 
I, as I say, I've not really spoken to that many aquarium companies. Uh, you need, you need, you, you, water changes aren't enough. You do need, um, you might get away with it for six months, but you need to dose. The llama will return nice. Indeed, he will. Um, let's carry on going and catch up with the chat a little bit. Ooh, what's this? Mark Hoffman is awesome. James Hoffman is awesome. Uh, I don't know who that is. Aquarium Adventures is brilliant. That was the freshwater one, right? Um, Aquat a Gallery Aquatica is a good channel in Australia. I started watching their stuff, but I got a bit bored of it. It was all um, tank installs and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, it, it was cool. Um, I just I just didn't don't watch anymore. Um, what's the Dallas Queen of Reef? Queen of Reef is good. Uh, Simply Aquariums is good. Uh, there's loads. There's loads. <laughs> uh, something I've been wondering since you uh, got a reef flare. Do you reckon that two reef flare S could sustain SPS on a 250? Probably. You'd have to. I think you'd probably have to run it 250. Red Sea Reef 250. That's so. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, probably could do. Yeah, yeah. You'd have to run them 80, 100 percent. You'd have to have them quite high up, but probably. I'd, I th I think I'd probably go for the – um because that would cost you 700 quid, so I'd probably just go for the L, and then you've got no worries whatsoever. Um, but you might be able to get away with uh, with the smaller one, with two small ones. Uh, Bahama Lama is doing a project for BRS. Ooh. Whilst also managing his own radio station, apparently. Oh, interesting. He did say on um, in reply to some of the uh, – the uh, the chat the posts from uh, what's it called from Jim, Jim Graham Telegram, that um, if anyone wants to know what's going on, send him a private message and he'll tell you. Um, but I don't want to pry; it's none of my business. <laughs> it's the way I saw it, um, so I'll just wait and see. But uh, there we go. Maybe that's uh, maybe that's what's happening, which would be good because I want to see him back and doing more videos. He's just he's another really engaging character, isn't he? Just a natural personality. Anyone else uh, with an SPS tank getting pissed when people come around? your house and say, oh, nice, but I prefer the wavy coral. Yeah, <laughs> everybody likes pulsing Xenia, don't they? <laughs> um, and Pez Pez says, why why do you keep avoiding my question, mate? I have not seen your question, which is why I'm avoiding it. Let me scroll back up and see. Post it again, because I haven't seen it, um, but I'm not avoiding it deliberately. I, I, sometimes people say this. Um, uh, I, I, sometimes I might avoid or not uh, post a comment that's... <clears throat> negative or critical i don't do it on purpose <laughs> i promise uh, i get on average i don't know 450 comments uh, in the chat and i just can't read them all but um i can't see your comment pez pez tell me what it is post it again and i will oh here we go here we go here we go our first tank is 10 months old and flourishing nope that's not a comment <laughs> uh, that's not a question sorry uh, if that was it good it's flourishing and i'm glad that my videos have been helped thank you very much but if you've got a question post it because i've not seen it and that's why uh, i'm avoiding it and i will give you time to post it again because i think i'm likely to wrap up soon because there's not really much else to say on this reefing report issue it's I, I i'm gutted that it's um that they've gone i think it's a little bit shady the reasoning behind it and i'm disappointed in whoever has has brought it about <laughs> um but it's not something that i think is particularly concerning it's not like i'm expecting uh, an aquarium company to tell me Hey, you need to um, to say X, Y, and Z, or stop saying X, Y, and Z, or we're going to um, uh, sue you or whatever. It's not a, a sign of things to come. I think it's just uh, it's just a shame, and it's just unique to this one particular situation. So that's about it, really. And we will wrap up soon. We'll we'll, we'll do a um, an early night tonight, and I can't. Oh, the coral event, mate. Yes, you posted one on Reefer. You posted this last week, and this is a prime example of a comment I miss. And I watched these streams back the next day to make sure I didn't say anything stupid or, or wrong, more to the point. Um, and sometimes I think, ah, I needed to say, like someone asked the other day, how, uh, someone asked last weekend, I think, how do you, do, how do you um, control nutrients in um, without a sump or something like that? And I was like, well, you could do carbon dosing, you can have a hang on the back filter, that's about it. And then I watched it back and I was like, water changes. <laughs> Why didn't I say water changes? But anyway, this is a prime example of uh, a comment that I missed. So uh, you you mentioned last week when I'm reefer uh, the coral event. You reminded me as I'd asked you to do, and I I didn't see your comment, so I missed it. The coral event, right? There is a quick summary. I'll come back to that. Um, there is a coral event in the UK potentially. There was one a couple of years ago called Coral Freaks, uh, and I did a video on it. So go and check it out on uh, on my channel. Um, 
it uh, was at a place called, well, uh, run by a shop or two shops called Advanced Aquarium, AAC, Advanced Aquarium Consultancy in Harlow, just north of London, and Reef Dreams that was in Winchester and has just moved to Southampton. Two of the best shops in, in the south of England, probably in the country, although I've not been to many apart from uh, the ones down south. Uh, that was a really good event. There were, I think, 400 people there, um, and it was fantastic. There were a load of brands there. Red Sea was there. Neptune were there. Uh, uh, Tropic Marine were there. No, TMC were there, sorry, with Tropic Marine and stuff. Aqua Illumination were there. Loads, Ecotech were there. Loads of people were there. Fan from Tidal Gardens came over. There was a guy called Jamie Craggs, who is uh, basically a scientist breeding corals. Check out Project Coral if you want to know more. Really interesting. He did a talk. David Saxby did a talk. There were uh, prags to buy. It was wicked. It was very small scale. It was a, a small show. Don't expect it to be like Reef of Palooza. Um, but it was it was small time, but it was really good. Um, and um, I had a chat with um, uh, AAC. They invited me and a, a, I don't know, a dozen other people up um, to their shop to talk about a potential second show. And they wanted me to talk, AAC wanted me to talk a little bit about the, the challenges of, of hosting a, a, a coral show in the UK, because a lot of people don't understand, um, myself included, uh, the, the complexities. It's not as easy as you think, um, and uh, it's, it's very expensive, and there, there aren't that many people who've got the money to pump into it. But basically, there might be a second one coming. Um, there's going to be a second meeting at some point when they discuss it. If there is, I'll go along and make videos about it. Um, so there might be a second one coming. I don't know when. Um, I think they were saying next year. I think. I don't think they were saying this year because it was too too much. Um, but they were talking about other things. So uh, I can't remember if I'm allowed to say this or not. But um, that's, uh, I'm going to say it. <laughs> I think I don't. As far as I'm concerned, if I'm not saying anything outrageous, it's okay. Um, so there's a uh, reefer palooza in the, in the United States um, is a big car show. And uh, there's talk of there being a reefer palooza in, uh, in Europe. So basically it's got the reefer palooza tag. So whoever owns reefer palooza, I don't know, sells it and someone buys the, the name for 50,000 quid or 10,000 quid or whatever it costs, and then puts on a show somewhere in Europe. That's a possibility, but, it's not like it's on the verge of happening. Um, it's just something that's been talked about in the background. But who knows if it'll ever happen. And if it does, it's not coming anytime soon. Um, there are other uh, possibilities of doing it as well. There was a trade show recently called Interzoo that I'm gutted I didn't get to go to. I was invited. Refactory said they'd give me a free ticket. It's a 20-quid ticket, so it's not like I'm getting um, massive kickbacks or whatever. But they... Um, I just couldn't, I couldn't, I didn't have the time. It was during the week. I would have had to take a week off work. Anyway, um, so I was gutted I didn't go to that, but that was trade only. And there isn't really a massive amount going on. There, there's a potential for uh, one of the trade shows in the UK to uh, to have a day, if it's a two day event, one day of trade, one day of um, of hobbyists, because the trade shows are important to the trade. They, they, they do business there, they meet people, and it's, it's important. So they need to run that. You can't just open it up to the, the public and you can't have the same conversations they would do if it was just trade. So possibly, but it's, it's, it might be coming. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll soon find out, but don't expect it to be um, an enormous show. And at the end of the day, it's run by a local fish shop. Uh, and that means, and it's very, well, <laughs> it's easier for them to do it at their, their shop rather than set one up halfway across the country, for example. So don't expect it to be in the north of England or in the Midlands or even in the West Country. Um, but there might be one coming. It's well worth going. If you can travel for it, go. If it does, if they do do Coral Freaks too, and you can travel for it, go and get there, because we don't have coral shows in the UK. Um, so do go if it, if it goes on. But I don't know. When I hear more, I'll tell you. For now, it's just a possibility, but it's, it's difficult and expensive. And uh, the shop in AAC lost money they didn't make a profit. They lost money putting on that show. So, you know, and there's a lot of um, a lot of hassle involved. Thank you for reminding me, one-armed reefer. And you will be there if they do. <laughs> reefer Paul Loser. Nice. A clever pun on the fact that Paul at AAC is... Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> I'm just telling you it's Paul. You and a few other YouTubers have got me into this hobby. Just bought my first fish tank. Wicked. I love that. I absolutely love it when people say... And it's not just me, of course, but but, um, but but people watch my video and got into the hobby. Um, that's cool. That 
that's a good thing for me. Uh, yes, Jamie Burgess has seen the softy tank at Moss End. An absolute beaut. Uh, I enjoy the mix three that they shut down. Uh, but they have a new one set up loving seeing their progress indeed um pez pez mate you've not answered you've not asked the question again so i'm afraid i can't answer it but um uh i'll try to answer it next time if you if you ask me a question but do ask me summary all right shivon all right calm down i'll get to you god so demanding aren't you um so summary there's a channel called reefing report and this is i'll tell you this and then i'll wrap up the channel called reefing report um, that uh, it was won by uh, <laughs> you're trying uh, Terence and uh, Terence from Neptune and Mark Callan from Saltwater Tank Saltwater uh, 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 Aquarium .com. No, yeah, uh, Mr Saltwater Tank. Um, it was a really good live stream show, and uh, it's been shut down basically because Terence had a conflict of interest, and I suspect um, he was being told you're saying things that are too honest and open. And it was a really good show because it was independent, and they gave balanced reviews and, and stuff on. Uh, all of their products, but there you go. There you go. <laughs> you've got your you've got your summary. Uh, and Pez Pez is not coming up. Uh, oh, I, I have set. I had um some oh, when I did the Vi when I did the vibrant live stream. There was some just like nonsense spam, oh, like racist crap coming up. Um, that uh, it turns out I didn't have when you, with these live streams, you can have it. When I, until then, I had it so you could say anything you want. <laughs> And it would come up. You could use the worst swear words you can think of, and it would show, show up in the chat. And I didn't realise you had to turn that off. So I had that one incident with the um, this nonsense. Just oh, it was outrageous. And I after that, I found the button that let you turn um, comments off, uh, and it, it turns off. So now it will block anything that it thinks is controversial. And I put the advanced filter on, so it says it's a bit more cautious. And I don't think that stops many people. But if sometimes. The YouTube, um, uh, uh, the YouTube filter blocks comments for no reason. So the, if you post a comment on my channel and then you can't find it, it's not because I've deleted it. Um, sometimes YouTube just blocks just normal comments for no reason. So I suspect, Pez Pez, uh, you've used a word that uh, YouTube thinks is offensive and it doesn't want to, to post it. So um, don't really know what to say, <laughs> to be honest. You're not, raising, you're not being racist, just asking about large Red Sea Max tanks. Yeah, well, who knows what word it was that you said that, uh, that it didn't like. But um, Large Red Sea Max tanks. Oh, yeah, the I'm, I'm not so keen on them. Uh, the S500 and the S600. Oh, no, no, no. Is it the new? Tell me, ask your question. Put it in the comments after this um, if, um, if you don't get to it, and, uh, and I will uh, catch up. Random question, but how much roll does your Red Sea reef might get through a day my second roll my first roll lasted a month 25 days actually oh, i've just turned my phone off <laughs> turned it off at the start um so i can't tell you on the app um the first roll lasted 28 days 25 days the second roll i changed this week uh, this weekend it lasted 28 days um and i would expect it to last longer than that when it gets going but maybe not so 28 meters divided by 28 a meter a day there we go there's your answer. I can even do the maths. How good is that? Um, let's have a look. Large red sea tanks on the Facebook page seem to be failing. Oh, really? Okay. There was. They did have a problem with uh, the 725 XL, I think. Or I, I couldn't really work out if it was a problem or not. But some of them failed, uh, and a, a couple, I think, were, they they burst because the cabinets were they weren't sturdy enough or whatever. But they fixed that problem and it went away. Um, but interesting. I know nothing about that. I don't know if it's true. Uh, but yeah, I've not seen. Um, so can't tell you, I'm afraid. Um, but uh, you'll be interested today, my uh, my thoughts. What's shaking? Devon is in the house. My man, Dev. Uh, excellent channel as well. Um, I don't know. Uh, they seem to be failing. What's thoughts? I've got a big uh, Red Sea tank. It holds probably half a ton <laughs> of water and rock. And it's fine. I've had it for four years. I don't know. I'd be pretty pissed off though if it burst. But um, I don't know. I don't know. If, I, if it's just one or two, they happen. <laughs> it happens. It's tanks fail. So, uh, and uh, thanks for coming along, Dev. Good to see you. Really. Uh, so if they if some if one or two fail, then that just does happen. But yeah, I don't know. I, I don't really, I don't know anything about it, so I can't really give you anything uh, any useful information. Um, and someone was asking for a vibrant update. There is no vibrant update, as far as I'm aware. Um, 
So I don't know, can't tell you anything, I'm afraid. So long as you or anyone doesn't say anything bad about BOS or Neptune, everything is okay. Anyone doesn't say anything bad about I don't, I, that feels like a, a barb. I feel like you're having a pop. Um, but I don't quite understand what you're saying. I think I, I mean I like BOS. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> fair enough. But anyway. Um, but I don't mind if they do something wrong, I'll talk about it. That's fine. I'm okay. Ah, Red Sea Max Peninsula tank. There is no Red Sea Max Peninsula tank. There's a Red Sea Peninsula and a Red Sea Max, is my understanding. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I've got no idea. Um, I can't, can't, can't tell you anything interesting. Can you do a video about the dangers of reefing, like poisoning from corals? Someone asked this. It might have been you. Um, no, I won't do a video about that, <laughs> to be honest, because if for me, it's there's no risk. Or the risk is just minuscule. And if you're so worried about buying corals from a, a health and safety point of view, that it's putting you off, don't go into the hobby. It's not for you. In my opinion, if that's your level of risk aversion, don't get a car, don't walk across the street, et cetera, et cetera. There's the, the, the risk of being poisoned by a fish or coral is absolutely minimum. There is a theoretical risk that zoas, some, some zoanthids or palithoas contain a toxin that is harmful, but the chances of, of, um, of getting hurt by it are just so minimal that my, if I made a video on that, I'd be saying, don't worry about it. <laughs> I have a fox face that is supposedly ven venomous. He's never harmed me. They're, they're not, they don't attack you. That's not what they do. Some people are allergic to cor certain corals. And the worst I've seen is people get a little rash from touching a coral. But that's about it. So I would never make a video on that because I don't believe it to be a, a risk, uh, I'm afraid. What's your opinion on the Apex ecosystem? Like the whole package Trident included, would you consider it? I have considered it in the past. It just, I so I, I went looking for GHL. I went looking at GHL and I bought GHL products. I didn't like the way their software worked. I then looked at the Neptune stuff and it, I don't, there's something about it that doesn't speak to me. I, it's the sort of thing that I think if I got it, I'd probably love it, but I just don't like it. I don't like the uh, look of it. And then I got into Refactory and I really like Refactory because the software just suits me. It's just easy to use and it works. Um, and it's Wi-Fi and all that sort of stuff. So you can check in uh, when you're on holiday, when you should be doing other things than checking on your pH. <laughs> so, but yeah, I would consider it. But I've just something about it just, I don't know, something about it just doesn't appeal to me that I can't quite put my finger on. It's not like it's bad equipment and people who have it rave about it. So, I don't know. Um, are we, <laughs> we've talking Telegram Takeover reefing report. Yeah, for sure. Let's do it. <laughs> I would like to have more guests on this show because I sometimes think me talking for two hours. Is that really that entertaining? I don't know. I enjoy it. So. <laughs> um, same play. The cheap ones that uh, spread like a weed, the ones we would avoid. Some play. Maybe that's uh, Pally Thoroughs. Pally's knocked me out for a couple of days. There you go. That's the worst that can happen, in my opinion. There are there are there, there are some reports, and this is probably where it comes from. Some reports of people boiling rocks and um, and uh, it uh, gassing your, your family and this sort of stuff, and they get hospitalised and then they're fine, and that's what puts people off. But I just for me the risk is just so minimal. I don't I don't really entertain it to be honest. What do you think of Tommy Tang? Do I have a Tommy Tang? No, I've got a Gold Rush. Tang. Is it Gold Rush Tang? Yeah, that's a Tommy Tang, right? Same thing. I mean, I'm just going to Google this because <laughs> there are two small tangs like this, I think. I'm pretty sure that mine's a Tomini or Tomini. It is. Yeah, yeah, I have one. Is that a um, is that also known as a gold rush or a gold rim or something? Whatever. Uh, I have one of those. Um, he's all right. He's not the best. Al I don't have really. I've got a couple of little bits of algae in the tank, but nothing of any, nothing to worry about. They're cool. I like him. Um, if I had a bigger tank, I would not. I'd have something else. I'd, fox faces are just awesome eating algae for me. Um, so yeah, they're okay, but I'm, they're not my not my favourite to be honest. The six foot others had issues with stand, and then they fit an extra brace yeah, in the sump. Sorted the problem, and then they seem to be splitting, but ninety percent down to tanks not being level. Yeah, see, this is the thing. If uh, the, I did see one guy the, when this and it came out before with I think it was the seventy five XL. The only I think I saw two people complaining about it and it sounded like and everyone was like there's two people there must be a thousand maybe i missed it more maybe there's more to it i think there was one genuine issue as far as i can make out but there was one guy who looked shady as hell and it looked like he was just trying to get money out of red sea by posting on their facebook group 
and he was he just I can't remember what happened, but he he was dodgy. And when they were asking him, oh, can you post this photo and ask him questions, he went quiet, and it seemed like he was scamming to me. Um, but yeah, but there you go. Dev likes um, uh, Tommy Tangs as uh, smaller Tangs. Yeah, if I had a bigger tank, I'd have uh, a bigger Tang. But uh, yeah, to be fair, for a little 150 litre, don't tell the Tang police. He's all right until he gets big. <laughs> Do you know if there is a genus of coral called Astraea? There are, I think there's Astraea snails, aren't they? Astraea. Astraea snails. Yeah, there's Astraea snails. I've never heard of an Astraea coral. Let's have a look. Coral. Yes, actually there is. Oh, no, of course. Yeah, okay. Oh, right. That looks like um, Cyphastria sort of thing to me. Uh, yeah, it belongs to the Merulinidae family. Uh, cool. Yeah, there you go. I'll show you what this is coming up with, these sorts of things. And that looks a lot like closed brain corals. Okay, so some kind of random LPS corals, yeah. Never, don't think I've seen that sort of thing in a shop unless, and that looks like a Cyphastria to me. So may, uh, maybe a little bit different, polyps are different. But um, I've never come across Astria, uh, Astria uh, corals. <laughs> um, Telegram. I owe Alex a talk, but the reefing report will be there when Terrence come back. Yeah, and we'll sort that out at some point, actually, to be fair, which will be good. We'll, we'll talk calc, a bit of slurry action. Um, Presley Reef managed to pal palitox himself. He did. Uh, but he cuts uh, corals in half with a bandsaw all day long and has been doing it for years now and has been uh, doing fun. Do you know what, Dev? We should get a few YouTubers on it. You did. So Dev um, does live streams with uh, Reefing with O and uh, Reef the Sea for... Be the fountain, not the drain. Be the fountain, not the drain, I think. They're really good fun. Um, but yeah, maybe we should get a couple of tubers on the go at the same time. That'd be good fun. Just chat about reefing. I got a question. What are your thoughts on lionfish? I said I was going to wrap up, didn't I? I'm rubbish at that. Uh, lionfish uh, are one of the fish that, before you get in the hobby, you think are fantastic. And uh, I would have absolutely loved one back in the day before I started the hobby. But when you get into the hobby, the reality is very different. Um, and I would never have a lionfish. I just I don't like predators. I don't like something in my tank that is trying to eat other things. Um, but I've never kept one, and it just doesn't appeal to me. The, the little fuzzy dwarf ones are, um, uh, 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 I don't know, probably a bit more suitable to to most tanks. But I don't like lionfish to be honest. And I don't know if it's because because they're an invasive species, aren't they? And I don't know if that's in my head, and I'm thinking I don't like them because of that. But I don't. They're not really my cup of tea. GHL were pretty annoyed by one of Parker's Reef's videos. To be fair, I thought that video was that his. So I can't remember what it was. He was setting up a cage director, maybe. GHL are a, a very good company. They make very good products and they have a very good reputation, particularly for the hardware. So I'm not knocking them. But his experience, if you watch his video on setting up, his experience was exactly the same as mine. I'm tech savvy enough. I play with kit all the time, uh, with cameras, with laptops, with uh, with work, uh, with them um, reefing kit all the time, with uh, that's my bag, and I just found it a nightmare setting up. I had the exact same experience M messaging their support forum, which were really helpful and got back to me really quickly. But god, it was a nightmare, so I don't think they can justifiably be annoyed with him because that's what happens. <laughs> um, but yeah, and they don't, don't, but even with that, like if that if that puts you off, fair enough, it puts you off. But also look at videos from people who like it because there are plenty of people who absolutely love uh, GHL stuff. So, yeah, for sure. Uh, don't just listen to the bad stuff. Uh, and Devon's up for it. Woo! Group one, group chat. Trouble is, it's, it's time zones, isn't it? I don't know what time it is in uh, in Canada at the moment, but uh, all the most of the reefing channels that I watch from America and from Canada are on at um, when I'm asleep. <laughs> but, yeah, it'd be cool. What tank would you recommend for a reefer 250? Uh, what tank? Yeah, I, I don't know. I would recommend a, a, a fox face tank. <laughs> I would go for a fox face instead of a tank personally. But if you really want a tank, I would get uh, maybe a white tail coal tank. They're quite expensive, but I love mine. Um, but I'd probably get a zebra soma of some kind, a yellow tang or a purple tang. Um, but I don't know. I'm not really the one to ask. I don't like tangs. I've not had many. I only had maybe four or five, and I just don't like them. So I'm not the best person to ask. Uh, what else have we got? Any zebra samer? There you go. So you agree with me? Uh, oops. 
would love that. Devin, love your live streams, buddy. There we go. There we go. So we'll do a, 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 group, a group one one day. Uh, only lionfish I like is the Fu Manchu lionfish. That's a little one, right? Fu Manchu lionfish. Let's have a look. Yeah, oh, they're pretty cool, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's show you everybody what I'm looking at. So these these guys, they're, they're cool. I still wouldn't have one, but they're pretty cool. And they're only, they're only we. So if you ever see them in the shops... Uh, they look cool, but I just think they're bad at it. It was the Ion Director. Fair enough. Okay, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I had a similar experience, but um, the Ion Director does, and to be fair, Telegram had an Ion Director and loves, has an Ion, Dire Ion Director and loves it, and is getting consistent results. So I suspect it was something Sam was doing wrong in the same way that my KH Director, it was me doing something wrong. Um, but there you go. Watch, watch, Pete, watch. But those reviews I find really useful because you can, I don't think you should necessarily be put off by that and think oh, there's no way I'm buying an iron director, but know that um, that it's it, sometimes you can have that kind of experience. But but don't just seek out positive reviews, which I do all the time. I'm trying to if I'm thinking about buying something, I go to I'm, I'm, I've decided I'm going to buy it, and I just go to find reviews that try to persuade me that it's a good idea. And the Parker's review is a good a, a good video I think to show you both sides. Although he was very critical and there wasn't. A lot of balance, but that's because he had such a stressful experience. <laughs> did you know that Euphilia has been split into Fimbriophilia and Euphilia? I did know that. Um, hammers and frog spawns of Fimbriophilia torches Euphilia. Yeah, Tyler Gardens talked about that recently. Um, yeah, it's fair enough because torches um, uh, don't play well with um, hammers and, and uh, frog spawns, so <laughs> it probably makes sense. Uh, Devon has uh, GHL and Apex. Apex software is hands down better. But GHL is fit, physically better built, and that was the quality. The build quality of GHL is really nice. It feels solid, and I, they've got a good reputation for um, longevity and quality products. It's a German company, that's what they do well. Um, so yeah, and this is the thing that there are good sides and downsides. There are bad sides of of, uh, of Apex stuff, uh, of Neptune stuff, and there are bad sides of GHL. And you, you you won't necessarily be. Some people might be better suited to GHL. Some people might better be be better suited to Neptune. Some people will be better suited to other things. It's it's not that they're bad products. It's just that they're pros and cons. It's like some people like BMWs. Some people like Mercedes. Some people like Fords. It's all different. So I don't think there's much bad quip, bad equipment in hobby. To be completely honest, um, have I got any experience with Cage Keeper Plus? Yes, I've had one for about a year. It was given to me for free. And I've had a cage, the standard cage keeper for uh, about two years. And I'm still on the, the, one of the things I thought about, and I think I said this in my review, was the, the probe was, it was only a little probe. Did I, did I worry about that? I don't know. Um, and I thought that, you know, it's a cheap little probe. Uh, is it going to be a bit rubbish? I, I'm still using the same probe two years later and it's fine. <laughs> so if you've got any questions, ask me. But I've done, I don't, probably, probably won't be able to tell you much more than I've done. I've done a few reviews. So go and look at the reviews. And every time I think about doing a long-term review for uh, the Cage Keeper Plus, I think, well, I watched my first video and I'm like, said pretty much everything I want to say. I had a couple of little niggling issues, but nothing really to get excited about, nothing worth reporting on. Um, so if you've got questions, ask me. Um, but uh, yeah, I have got experience with it. <laughs> it's a good bit of kit. Newbie here. Uh, am I, am I, I am at my wit's end with hair algae. What do I do? Oh man, get yourself on a forum and ask loads of questions. But, but so there are, oh, there's a load of ways of dealing with hair algae, but it depends really on what size tank you've got, what fish you've got, how much you're feeding, if you've got corals, a million things, where you're getting your water from. You want to do, uh, as a general rule, if you've got uh, issues with, with hair algae, you want to pull out as much of it as you can do, do water changes. A few big water changes, maybe three or four, thirty percent water changes in a row in the space of a week. Um, get on top of your nutrients because there's something either you're not exporting nutrients or you're feeding too much and you're putting too many nutrients in. So get on top of that um, and make sure you've got good quality source water. If you're buying it from your local fish shop, ask what their TDS is. If the answer is not zero, that might be why. Um, but pff, you, you might. It's, it's, it's either feeding too much, uh, not exporting enough, so as in not enough filtration, and something to eat it. <laughs> it's, all, it's all well and good saying, oh, you know, get your nutrients under check and all that sort of stuff and source your, get your source water done. I do all that, and I get algae in my tank. You, you never see it because it gets eaten by 
urchins, uh, fox faces, tangs, um, and all that sort of stuff. Urchin, a blue tuxedo urchin is my secret weapon in reefing. I think that's the one thing that everybody should have. They're wicked and they do eat your hair, green hair algae, but try to pull out as much of it as you can, but get yourself on a forum and where you can post photos and, and explain a little bit more. So, um, I appreciate you sharing getting kit for free, Alex. I like that openness. See, for me, there, there are different ways of doing it. I've talked about this before and um, th there are different ways of doing it. It's not as simple as uh, everybody should just be open because you don't want to make a, a video, a product review where every five seconds you're saying, I was given this for free. I was given this for free. Hey, thanks for this company for sending me over this. It, you don't want, no one wants to watch a YouTuber saying I've been given something for free every five seconds. But personally, I like saying that at the start there's no ambigu ambiguity. If you put up the little banner in the top corner that says this contains a, pr a paid promotion, that's probably the way you should do it. But I don't like that because I think, well, if you if it says paid promotion, that implies I've been paid. I've never been paid, been given something for free, but I consider that to be different. And I think if I was being paid and given something for free, I would want I would then put up paid promotion. But I, I think that's really important. But um anyway let's see if we've got questions on no you've not come in uh hair algae physically remove yes oh h202 uh what's that hydrogen peroxide isn't it yeah never used that but actually Devin did a video on that i believe maybe a live stream so go and check that out as well but yeah tuxedo urchin are are, are wicked hammer approach oh uh, yeah for kind of all double dose if you can take it but still may come back if nutrients are out of whack yeah or too much light too much light is a good point as well a lot of people have too much light because it's easy to think, hey, I've got lights, let's turn them up because everything looks good when it's bright. Um, what are your thoughts on brittle stars? Brittle stars are good. I like them. Uh, BRS seem to ultimately recommend riding out as far as algae is concerned. Yeah, to a, to a point. But a lot of the times people will ask about algae when they've been trying to ride out for six months <laughs> and they're fed up. Um, and it depends what stage you're at. Because if you like, if, my, if I start getting algae in my tank, there's no way I'm letting it riding out, riding out. But if it's early days, it'll burn off to a point. But I mean, there's normally something you can do. Um, US laws doesn't differentiate. Here, free product is being paid. To be fair, it might be the same in the UK. I don't know what the, the true position is. Um, it's just that I just think that if that's the, and that makes perfect sense if that's the law and that's what uh, US law says. But I personally think if I see um, paid, uh, this contains a paid promotion. That doesn't that doesn't tell the full story, which is why I prefer to say I've been given this free than not say anything and put paid promotion. I think it's more accurate that way. That's just the way I prefer to do it. But um, oh yeah, Dev's got G fives and G six radions. Is it weird having a mixture, Dev, of having because uh, you've got I think you've got like a you've got pros, you've got blues, you've got fives and sixes. Does it? Do you see a difference in the color? I had before. I had a Kessel and a radion. And the colour didn't blend very well. It's a bit different, but does it does it give like a complete uniform look, or can you kind of see zones in your tank where you get slightly different colour? Be interesting to hear. JT, hi Alex. How do you deal with shadows? Uh, lighting SPS, no matter how uh, more light, <laughs> basically T fives uh, are good for getting rid of shadows, um, and uh, I have uh, roof brights as well, so I like a lot of light. Just big, big panels of light is, is the way to deal with shadows. Um, but if you've got sh uh, SPS growing and shadowing other corals, it's uh, reef tank life. <laughs> it's not come back, move them. It's a bit difficult. Uh, what year was it when you first got your tank? I think it's about eight years ago, so 2016. Yeah, in fact, yeah, September 2016, I think. And I'd had fresh water for a couple of years before that, but got bored of it. Uh, Astraea snails in the hobby are actually lith lithopoma, lithopoma snails. The species of these snails are lithopoma tectum and lithopoma American, americanum. Hashtag science. Very good. And you're talking to uh, other people. My boss gives me a fridge. Uh, my boss gives me a fridge or car tire instead of my wages and tells me it's the same. I'll be pissed. <laughs> Indeed. Good point well made. Three, right. So Dev's got three uh, G5 pros, one G6 blue, one G6 Pro. You can see the difference in blue if you pay attention. The Pro 6 is brighter than the uh, G5. Yeah, there's so many videos at the moment on the on the G5 and the G6. Um, and there was a Reef Builders one today that I've not seen as yet. But um, uh, the I was never a fan of the Gen 4 um, uh, Reef uh, 
what's it called? <laughs> uh, Ecotech XR30. Yeah. Um, I was never a fan of the of, of that because I found it a little bit staticky and maybe I had it set up wrong or something. I don't know. But I was, I was never a massive fan of it. The five and the six being a little bit more spread out, I think look really good actually. Um, and I see them in shops quite often, the Gen 5s anyway, and they look really nice to be fair. So, um, yeah. They're good, and if you watch if you watch um, Ecotech reviews, and you think, oh, everyone just says good things about them, I can't trust them. It's because they're good lights, <laughs> and it's, there's a good reason they are the most popular light in the hobby. Anyway, we have come to the end of the chat, so I'm going to wrap up a little bit and go and get myself a, a top up a glass of water. Next week, I might do the uh, the talk about how to set up and run a reefing YouTube channel. So, other YouTubers, join me and uh, share your knowledge as well. Um, it's going to take me a bit of time to prep that. So if I get time, I'll do it. Uh, if not, I'll do something else. But thank you very much for coming along, guys. Uh, it's been a good chat. And I'll catch you next week. Have a good week.